Foundation Friday, July 21st, 2017. Steve Cypress here. I start out as always sharing one rhino out of my collection of nearly 100 rhinos. This one is a hand carved, I believe it's ebony, hard, dark brown wood, hand carved from somewhere in Africa. And I've had this one around, I don't know, 20 years or so. It's a beauty. Soft, I mean, it's hard, smooth. And a beautiful hand-carved ebony rhino for the rhino of the day. For today, Foundational Friday, July 21st, 2017. Let's get right to it. Short and sweet. Two weeks ago, I shared one of a number of, probably have about uh, six or eight or ten of these basic math numbers. And here's number two. And this is a number you got to know. This is the number that you will base all your decisions on when you do advertising or marketing for your business. You've got to know the lifetime value of a customer or the total customer value. So LCV, I mean TCV, LTV, whatever you want to call it. Look at all those things going across the page. Brett Olaya, great seeing you. Thanks for that. I'm getting all kinds of likes and whatever. Thank you very much. But I didn't say anything yet. I appreciate it. It's probably for my movie star good looks and my incredible fashion sense of the ugly red Hawaiian shirt. Anyway, you got to know this number, folks. So if you're going to place an ad, you've got to know what's the lifetime value of the customer to know how much you can place that ad. Did you ever wonder why, you know, if you open up the yellow pages or if you remember the days when you opened up the yellow pages and there were full page ads for pizza places when pizzas were five or ten bucks? Brett Olaya is still throwing likes across the page like crazy, and there's yellow things and blue things, and I don't even know what they are. <laughs> I'll take them all good. So uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking with it. They're all good. So, uh, you know, you must have thought. I can understand how a roofer who does a ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollar roof can place a full page ad. How can a place place a full page ad when a pizza's ten bucks? Well, that's because they're basing on the lifetime value of the customer. So See, here's the deal. The local pizza, Giuseppe's Pizza Place, where Giuseppe comes in at dawn every day for the last 40 years, turns on the ovens and bakes a fantastic pizza, but, you know, that's it. Doesn't have, you know, much of an income, and but he loves what he's doing, you'll always say. But then, you know, across town, there's the Papa John's, owned by a guy who owns 37 of them, and the pizza's nothing like Giuseppe's. It's not even good at all, but he knows all his numbers, and he's making a ton of money because he's an entrepreneur, and he's acting like it. And so he knows his lifetime value of a customer, and he can place a full-page ad even when he only has one, let, uh, one location. How can he do that? Well, let's think. Let's say a pizza's 10 bucks, and a new family moves into your town, and they call up on a Friday night and they say, we'll take a couple of pizzas. You say, great, that's 20 bucks. Well, now you have the chance if you deliver, which I assume you've got a good product and you've got good service, you deliver it on time and it's hot and fresh and it's good. And there's a bounce back coupon in there. Discuss that if you don't know what that is, you know, discount on the next visit. And, uh, and you want to get them coming back and back. And what if every Friday night they order a couple of pizzas? It's pizza night. And the average family stays at home for about five years, actually over the last eight years of a nonstop recession, pretty much. It's gone up to about seven years because people are not moving as much and buying new homes. But let's just keep it at five, five years. That's 50 weeks a year times 20 bucks, a thousand bucks a year. They're spending in your place on pizza. Five years is five grand. So the Papa John's entrepreneur knows when that phone rings with a new mover to the neighborhood, that's a potential $5,000 that he can put into his register when pizzas cost, you know, about three bucks to make. Uh, so those, that six bucks a week is 300 a year. So it's 1,500 out of his pocket in the food cost and five grand in. So it's a positive value of $3,500 profit when that phone rings. So the employees are instructed don't sit there and think you got something better to do or you're busy making a pizza or you're busy serving Cokes or whatever you're doing. Answer the phone. That could be $3,500 profit. And if that one new customer is worth $3,500 over the lifetime, well, now isn't it worth placing an ad for a couple of thousand a month? Well, of course, you get one client, you doubled your money. God forbid you get one a week. $14,000 in profit every month. 
The ad could cost you 10 grand, you're still making money, okay? So that's how advertising and marketing decisions are made. But Giuseppe places a little eighth of a page ad because he says, I can't afford anything more than 200 bucks a month. You understand, I'm just a pizza place. He doesn't get it at all because he's got a stupid little eighth of a page, quarter page, whatever little ad that nobody sees behind the full pages and the half pages. And even if they see it, they go, that must be crummy because the guy's got a tiny ad. I'll get the ad from this big place, which must be successful because they're placing a big ad. And if they're successful, they must have excellent pizza. So that's the place to call. And let me call them. And nobody ever sees Giuseppe's ad because not only is that a full page ad for the Papa John's, but they're smart enough to put good content in the ad. And we'll cover that in other videos, what you put into your ads to get that call. So people never turn that page into anywhere near Giuseppe's. So Giuseppe says things like yellow pages doesn't work anymore. And nowadays people actually believe that, even though of course I have plenty of clients and there's plenty all around the world, the yellow pages still exist, right? Must work for somebody. So I got clients making a killing in it, but the ones that do it wrong, that don't know their lifetime customer value, so they place dinky little ads and therefore don't get any customers, they're gonna blame every single way they use to, to market or advertise their business. Billboards don't work, yellow pages doesn't work, Valpack doesn't work, websites don't work, Google ads don't work, Facebook doesn't work, emails don't work, nothing works because I'm doing it crappy, because I'm not thinking of the lifetime customer value, I'm thinking of pizza's 10 bucks, I can't afford a, a decent size ad that'll get any attention and allow me some space in the ad to say some good things to get people to call. Make sense? So you gotta know your lifetime customer value. So how do you figure that out? Well, number one, you know, there's, there's all different ways of figuring it out, but you can just take an average. You can see how many customers you had last year, how much revenue the company had divided up, and there you go. Because an answer I get most of the time from the business owner is either I don't know, or they say, well, that depends. Well, of course it depends. I'm looking for an average. It's the average. So you add up for each of your different products. You can add up how many are sold. What's the average cost of that? What's the total money? You divide it up and you know that's the value per customer. So if you're brand new in business or you don't have these facts or figures or past receipts, then you gotta do some estimates. And you gotta say, okay, well, uh, let's say that if somebody's gonna come in to my restaurant every other week, that's 25 times a year for five years that they live in the neighborhood, so that's whatever, 125 times, and they're gonna drop uh, 50 bucks every time, so that's uh, $8,000 or whatever the heck it adds up to. Uh, I, I you know, don't have the calculator in front of me, but you take that number, that's, the, that's a lifetime value of that customer. Now you can get real fancy about it, and you could add in referrals. If you know that you provide such an excellent product or service that you really don't have to do traditional advertising and marketing all that much, you got just gotta do the smart things to get noticed by the clients and the customers and the patients that you want to attract. So you gotta have your name out there so that it supports the word of mouth, right? People can't just say, oh, we'll use Joe's Plumbing, and then Joe's Plumbing is nowhere to be found. You gotta be found by the people who are giving you the word of mouth. Well, ideally, you're your ideal, affluent, wealthiest, best clients, because that's who gives word of mouth, right? They don't sit there and go, I'll take the cheapest thing, or I'll go to Walmart, or I'll get the Val Pack, or whatever. They're asking their neighbors, hey, you know, your $2 million, my $3 million home, who did your driveway? Who did your landscaping? Who did your roof? Who did your kitchen? Like, they're asking around, and when somebody says, oh, it's, you know, Joe's remodeling, well, you got to be found there, right? But you don't want to be dinged thinking around with this stuff by not realizing that when you're getting word of mouth, that means every new client is actually worth three, four, or five. If they only give you one referral a year and they stay in that neighborhood for five years, that one job is worth six jobs. So you do the math, figure it out any way you want. If you want help, go to stevecypress.com slash help, fill out a form, tell me about your situation, we'll get on the phone and I'll help you out. Simple as that, but you gotta know this number. If you don't know this number, you have the danger of being the victim, like most small businesses are, to not knowing what the hell you're doing with your marketing and advertising, and therefore cheap, cheap, being a cheapskate about the whole thing, and you might as well, you're better off doing nothing. You're better off not throwing your, you know, couple of stupid 200 bucks a month out the window, if you're not willing to put the 1,000 bucks a month to get to dominate wherever you're marketing, so you get the attention, and you get the calls, and you get the money. If you're, you know, I spent three and a half years with the Yellow Page company, and people would tell me, oh, my, my half page ad isn't working, I'm gonna cut it down to an eighth. And I'm like, you know, uh, I, I gotta say yes. I mean, I would, you know, if that's what they wanna do, but if I was advising them, which I do now, since I'm no longer in the Yellow Page, I say, don't cut your ad down. 
If you're not doing it right, just cut it out completely. Don't cut it down. That's just throwing money away. Small ads is throwing money away. Sorry, but when it comes to marketing and advertising, size matters in case you can't tell. I'm pretty sure you don't see Apple uh, putting an ad on uh, on a weekend overnight at 3 in the morning on an obscure cable channel. No, they're putting it on the Super Bowl. They're putting it on in prime time. Okay, They're dominating. So unless you're going to dominate, your marketing, your advertising will not have the effect you want. And to be able to dominate, you got to be able to justify investing that amount of money. And to do that, you got to know a lot more than just the average price of something you sell. You got to know the lifetime value of a customer. And number two, and then we'll call it a day, you got to wake up every morning thinking, how can I increase that lifetime value of the customer? What can I do to get more referrals? What can I do to sell them more of my stuff? What can I sell them, do to get them to buy more often from me? What can I do to get them to come back? What can I get them to, what can I do to sell them something else? You gotta be thinking all the time, man, my lifetime value of the customer is, uh, you know, five grand. How can I get that up to six? How can I get that up to 72? How can I get it up to 8,400? Because when you do that, then you can place even bigger ads and you can dominate even more. And then you'll be the guy that everybody else in your marketplace is going to hate that guy. That guy's all over. He's got all the billboards, full page ads everywhere. He's everywhere. He's on the local radio. He's on the local TV. Man, that guy is everywhere. I hate that guy. Believe me, when it's your competition talking, you want them to hate you in that conversation. You don't want them to say, oh, I love that guy. He places dinky little ads that get no calls. So I love that guy. He's not even putting a dent into my business. Okay, So you don't want to be that guy. You want to be the guy that other people say, man, what does he know that I don't? We sell the same thing. How can he afford all these big ads all over the place? He can because either he saw this video or he's a client of mine or he learned it somewhere else like I did. And he knows that you've got to know the lifetime value of the customer. That's it for today, Foundation Friday. Hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, I go to the questions, comments. Adam Katz says there's two people watching but I'm seeing hundreds of likes and hearts by the bottom of the screen. How do you do that? I don't, so I don't know, but that's what people do. Uh, lifetime customer value, that's right. That's what we're talking about here. Brett says, I have raving fans, and I totally get it. That is true. I do totally get it. And my if you're talking about profits and revenue, my clients absolutely totally get it. Um, and my students, which uh, if you – Bully for you, you're better than me if you can implement this all on your own without any help from anybody else. But hopefully I'm giving you even this tiny little scratching the surface enough help to get going and do something. Get out there and make some money. Know your numbers. That's it for Down Foundation Friday. I'll be back tomorrow with Success Story Saturday. Thank you, Brett, Adam, for being here today. Sorry, uh, Adam, I don't know how Facebook works, so I couldn't answer your question. But uh, I appreciate you being here, and I appreciate all the likes and Things flying across the screen from whoever's doing all of that. And uh, I will be back tomorrow with Success Story Saturday. Thanks for being with me today. Bye-bye.